Omar bin Uzbekistan in the red corner representing Uzbekistan, Bahadir Jalalov. Well, we are almost a week into this tournament. It is the sixth day of Amman 2020, but for the first time, we are seeing the appearance of the tournament number one seed, 25-year-old Bakadir Jalalov, the reigning world championship gold medalist. His opponent is one of two boxers representing Bahrain, Denis Latipov, born in Ishimbe in Russia, now representing Bahrain. And he's prevailing by a third round stoppage over Song Hua Hyung Pyong in the first preliminary round. So we've got judges from Algeria, Australia, Argentina, Cuba, and Morocco watching this one. Round one. So into the opening round then. Back of the Jalalov. The South Pole wearing red representing Uzbekistan is the tournament number one seed. And he comes in here as the number one ranked boxer in the world. The reigning world championship gold medalist bidding to book his place at his second Olympic Games. He was a quarter finalist in Rio four years ago where he was bested by Joe Joyce, the eventual, eventual silver medalist at the quarterfinal stage. And there's his pet punch, the left cross. He had a terrific victory in the World Championships, did Jalolov, over Richard Torres of the USA in the quarterfinal, where he put the American out on the canvas with a terrific southpaw left, six feet, seven inches tall, returning to the Olympic code for the Asian Championships, where he duly took gold and the World Championships both last year after a 6-0 sojourn to the professional ranks, boxing all around America, principally out of New York. And this man, he was such a star in Uzbekistan, Alex, that he was the flag bearer in Rio 2016. But two, three good left hooks nudged in by Latipov on the inside. Yep, Latipov certainly can punch. We've seen him before. And he's technically not too bad as well. But he really is up against it here on the field. And Jalolov. Oh, the size of the fellow. But not just that. His judgment of distance is brilliant and he has a fantastic jab. Which, on occasion, when I've seen him in the past, everything comes from that jab. And I think that's what makes him so effective. He can control the distance going back and forward behind that long ramrod punch. And then, of course, when the left hand comes in behind it. Remember, he's still only 25 years of yeah, age. but he's, he's young. He's been yeah. on the global medal podium since 2015, the World Championships in Doha. That gives you an idea as to the man's quality. So getting some seasoning now behind his obvious ability as he drives in a left cross again, caught by the gloves, but still shaking Latipov, such was the force of the shot. But there's an arcing left hand, and that is one way you can have success against Jalolov if you can get inside, crowd the man, and make him blow backwards. Yep. And the man who was the ultimate exponent of that in Rio four years ago, the juggernaut, Joe Joyce, yep. who walked him down and wore him out over the three rounds. There's not that many people that Joe Joyce can't walk <laughs> down and wear out, though, on this planet. If Big Joe gets you on the end of those, you're in trouble. Nice right hand landed out of that southpaw stance by Jalolov. Oh, nice that's level a shot. cracking left hand. It found its way around the lead right hand guard oh, of the man nice. in blue. Terrific punch picking. And he knows it. He knows it. He gives Filippo a, a nod, as if to say, you're going to get some more of this over the next two rounds. 
Very effective southpaw left in evidence, but then there's the left hook that Latipov looks to favour. That short and mid-range. Yeah, he likes bringing it right over the top. Ten across the board, Ronald. All five judges scoring the first round in favour of Bakadir Jalolov, who, despite it being his first appearance of Amman 2020, found his range pretty immediately as his legs are worked on furiously now <laughs> by the Uzbek coach. Now, those are two trees <laughs> that that man had on his, on his own quads there. T literal trees. So into the second round then, Bakadir Jalalov looking to book his place at his second consecutive Olympic Games. <laughs> Denis Latipov. And born in Russia, just scores with a beautiful southpaw right jab and now offering more head movement as he looks to bob and weave his way inside, looking for his first Olympic berth. Beautiful right jab again yeah. from Latipov. Rapier. Nice jab from the man in blue. There's blood somewhere, Ronald. I don't know where. Oh, and a point's been taken away. A point's been taken off the card of Latipov. Here in the second round, he can score no more than nine. I'm not exactly too sure what it's for, but there is blood or a graze. I don't know where it's, what it's came from. Maybe the repeat will explain it for us, Ronald, because we certainly never seen nothing there that would cause... An infringement of that nature. Big left cross, wasn't it? Spear downwards from Jalalov. Teed up behind a long double jab. And that's the combination that he used to take out American. Richard Torres from America yeah. in the quarterfinal of the World Champs last year. That sparked a huge debate among the boxing community about... Oh, that's another jolting left cross from Jalalov on the back foot. Coming forwards is Latipov but he can't find the range as he was doing earlier in the round behind that right jab, but he's cutting off the ring effectively and then scores with a good right hand to the body and left hook to the head out of that southpaw stance. But the debate that it sparked among the boxing community as Jalalov scores with another left cross is about professionals being allowed to re-enter the Olympic code yeah. as they have been en masse since Rio 2016. But uh -huh. remember, five World Series boxes from the five three-minute round format were allowed into London 2012. Well, so it has yeah. been a bit, rather yeah. long time coming, and that's how it stands at the moment. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> if I'm going to be really, really honest with you, though, this level of competition is much higher <laughs> than what he would have been facing as a professional. Please let me tell you that right now, because there is no doubt in my mind that this level of competition is by far higher than anyone that you're likely to face in your first 10 to 15 professional bouts, especially if you're a world-class amateur or Olympic-style boxer coming into the ranks. Well, he came in with those Olympic credentials and that World Championship bronze from Doha, so as you say, he was given a series of effectively showcase fights in his first half dozen. Not yep. fed complete, no. no hopers, marginal winning records, but nowhere near no the way experience near it. that he's amassed no. during the course of his Olympic-style boxing career. They won't be world-class Americans, Cubans, Russians, Ukrainians. There's just no chance, Ronald, no way. Far lower level of competitive boxing, no matter what kind of boxing it, it might be. So some of the action from that second round where oh. Latipov had his moments at the start, that up jab and hooks but then he was docked a point in that second round, so he can score no more than nine, and if he's lost the round 10-9... Oh, no, 10-9 across the board. Well, if he's lost, that means... Mm, mm, that's good. No, because that would suggest that he's lost it 10-9, which means that it should be eight. Yeah, 10-8, yeah. Because if Latipov had won the round to end up with nine with the point infringement, nine would have... It's a 10-point must. Only one boxer can score 10. So the fact that Jalolov has got 10 means that Latipov could, should have come away with nine. The point off, he should have eight across the board. Does that make sense, Yeah, Alex? yeah, yeah, no, it does now. You're looking at it quizzically, man. Yeah, yeah, no, it does now. 
anything you say regarding that stuff, Ronald, I take it as gospel anyway. Well, the teapot is trailing heavily. Sent out with the instructions from his corner man, Coach Tony Davis, to get after Jalolov. But Jalolov meeting him head on and raining in big punches. That's good ring craft and experience from Latipov because he took himself out of punching range, employed the layback, but not before he took a cluster of punches without reply. Good left hand to the body from Latipov, who hasn't stopped going for this, but he is trailing heavily on the scorecards. Firing a speculative left hand over the top out of that southpaw stance. Getting nice and low there, Latipov, trying to evade the incoming shots and remember giant in the heaviest two weight classes 91 kilogram heavyweight and here at plus 91 kilograms only four berths available for tokyo 2020 from the asia oceania event that's a nice left hook from latipov after making jalolov miss and jalolov just getting on his bike to allow his senses to recover after being tagged by that shot yeah well we've seen latipov come and come on strong in the last round the Lolov's accuracy betraying him now, and again, just grazing, running to the other side of the ring. There's a graze beneath the right eye of the man in red. So he perhaps looking to see this one out over the line without picking up any further damage. Yep, you can see that clearly. Clearly being caused by a left hand. Good left hand by Jalolov. So no box-off possibility for the heavyweights and super heavyweights. Jalolov looking to make it a case of one and done, but he's met by a hard right jab from Latipov. Jalolov putting his considerable weight down on the back of the neck of the man in blue. Just taking some more seconds off the clock. Now getting to work behind a left jab, but Latipov comes back with a right hand of his own. Charging with the shoulder there was Latipov as he went to make some room for the left hand. Took a two-shot salvo and fired back with a left hook of his own. Terrific competitive spirit being de demonstrated by the man in blue. Looking for the shot that can bring about the finish and get Jalolov out of there. And again, that far more likely in this division than any other. Oh, of course, yeah. So Jalolov fainting with that right jab. He's done it three times now. Make that four and he yep. still hasn't pulled the trigger. No. But buying himself time and keeping Latipov occupied. <laughs> Latipov bites down, comes in behind a left hook, but can't find the range. And his bid to make Tokyo 2020, well, he's going to come up short here at Amman in the qualification event. Nice to see that sporting exchange between the opposing corners. The Uzbek corner helping Latipov remove his mouthpiece before tucking it down his jersey. Tony Davies with a congratulatory high five for Bakadir Jalolov. That's the man with the towel over his shoulder, the former GB coach. He's a long way from his home region of the northeast, now coaching out in Bahrain as he looks to bring on their boxers through to continental and world class. Heaps of experience under his belt, but his man, well, he won't be progressing through to Tokyo from the Asia Oceania event. He's selected by his federation, which I'm sure he will be. We'll see him at the global qualification Winner tournament in May. Here's Hakan the verdict. And the winner by unanimous decision in the red corner, representing Uzbekistan, Bakadir So, Jalolov. Bakadir Jalolov raising two fingers because he is a two-time Olympian. The man who was honored as the flag bearer of Uzbekistan in Rio four years ago has made it through to his second successive Olympic Games, the tournament number one seed, the number one ranked super heavyweight in the world, making it a case of one and done here at Amman in 2020, because he knows as a final four place finisher, he is going through to the Olympic Games for the second successive time. Wow, at only 25 years old. And he definitely controlled matters for the first two rounds. But going into the third rounds, things started to change a little bit. Suffered a mark over the, the right eye. And he started to noticeably fatigue as well. And he wasn't getting them off as well. But it will be the massive Uzbek in red that goes on to Tokyo, where he hopes to pick up a medal in his second Olympics. One win shy of the medal podium. Thanks to the vastly experienced Joe Joyce.
And you can see his teammates and compatriots up in the stands. This is how he did it.